Okay, so the last time we talked about how we find out uh, the distances in the Milky Way galaxy, uh, our location relative to the um, galaxy center, uh, its diameter, uh, uh, and so on. So today I would like to talk uh, a little bit more about the content of the Milky Way galaxy. Okay, so here is a schematic a diagram of our galaxy um, and there are three uh, main parts uh, to it. One is the disk. Uh, it consists of uh, stars, star clusters, and gas and dust. Uh, and there are two uh, types of star clusters. There are so-called associations and they are clusters from about 10 to 100 stars. They are usually O and B type. And the second group are so-called open clusters. They are clusters of about 100 to 1000 stars, which are also uh, often of the same type. Uh, uh, that is very hot uh, and luminous young stars. Okay, so here's the photograph of uh, one such open cluster. Uh, its catalog number is M45. So you can see the stars in the cluster and also some uh, reflection nebula surrounding them, right? So that is um, what uh, is present in, in the disk. In the halo, we have stars and globular clusters, as indicated schematically here. And both uh, the stars, individual stars, and uh, the stars in the clusters are uh, uh, cooler, lower main sequence stars. And they uh, are uh, typically uh, the oldest stars in the Milky Way galaxy and no gas and dust. As if all the gas and dust, we know that the stars get formed in the clouds uh, of uh, uh, gas and dust, more specifically in giant molecular clouds. Uh, so there is no gas and dust left in the halo and the stars tend to be older. So it seems that these stars in the halo and uh, the clusters, the globular clusters of those stars uh, have been formed early on in the formation of the galaxy. So th that all the material uh, uh, has been in effect used up. All of the stars in the halo have been formed a long time ago. There is no gas and dust left. And uh, the stars in the bulge they are similar to the stars in the halo. Again, low, most of them are lower main sequence stars. But in addition to those stars, there are also some hot and luminous young stars. So this systematics should give us some clues as to how a galaxy like our own galaxy is formed, right? There is clear distinction between the stars and star clusters in the disk uh, and those in the halo in the bulge and also the content of gas and dust. Lots of it in the disk but virtually none in the halo. And it turns out that the material in the disk is not distributed uniformly, that uh, it is distributed along the spiral arms. Okay. And the question is, how do we know that? Because we live in the disk, and the gas and dust uh, essentially in the disk blocks our view. This is a 360 degree uh, view uh, along the plane of the Milky Way. So this is um, 360 degree view along uh, the plane. Okay, so imagine we took the pictures, uh, of course, uh, uh, in 
always at night, but looking uh, in different directions. And when you put everything together, this is what you would uh, uh, see. And you can see that in the plane of the Milky Way, you can see that there is a lot of uh, gas and dust that basically uh, blocks our view. So how on earth do we know that the Milky Way uh, has uh, uh, the spiral arms? And the answer is that when we look at uh, other spiral galaxies, we observe that their spiral arms uh, another spiral galaxy that we observe from Earth. This M I mentioned before, <coughs> There's, there was a long time ago a fellow named Mercier. He established a catalog of different nebula in the sky. And his motivation was to serve, warn uh, people who like to look for comets about bad uh, directions to look at. So he cataloged them. And this particular one that, of course, uh, he didn't know what it was. It was something fuzzy. Uh, it, was, it had a number 100. And of course, later, it was with better telescopes, it was realized that it's uh, another spiral galaxy. So when you look at other spiral galaxies, you see that these spiral arms are outlined by these very hot luminous O and B uh, uh, type associations of stars. Of hot and therefore blue, right? The uh, color of the source depends on its surface temperature and the hottest stars, uh, because their surface temperature is so high, they appear to be bluish. Okay, so then the eureka moment is aha. So let's see if we can see uh, the associations of or open clusters of these <clears throat> very luminous and hot stars. And because they are luminous, we can see them in spite of the gas and dust some distance away from us. So when this is done, uh, we find that there are several spiral arms, probably more, in the Milky Way. Uh, here are uh, the names. There is an arm called Orion, and our sun Happen, and uh, us uh, revolving around the sun happen to be in this particular Orion arm. Uh, then there is Sagittarius arm, Perseus arm, Centaurus arm, and Cygnus arm. Okay, so by just locating the distribution of uh, uh, the associations and and open clusters of uh, hot and luminous stars, we can indeed see that they are distributed along uh, uh, in, 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 in patterns that resemble arms. Now, I should also like to add that uh, these very hot and very luminous stars, because they're very luminous, we know uh, uh, that they are also very massive because of a uh, relationship between luminosity and mass. And therefore, we also know that they don't live very long, tens of millions, maybe 100 million of years. Okay, So basically, they get born in these spiral arms, and they uh, spend their entire life in the spiral arms. In fact, you should not view this as a static picture. All the stars in the galaxy, they have to rotate around the ga galactic center and this arrow here indicates the sense of rotations, OK? So the stars, individual stars, move much faster. But there is overall slow motion of these spiral arms, OK? And we'll talk about uh, that in more detail later on. So our sun. Uh, because it is medium-sized star, its lifetime is about 10 billion years. It's been around for about 4.5, 4.6 billion years. It will actually move out of the Orion arm, right? And revolve around galactic center. It takes about 230 million years for the sun to revolve once around the galactic center. 
at the distance uh, of about 30,000 light years from the galactic center. But the snapshot right now is like this, okay? And as I said, most of these hot luminous stars that outline the spiral arms in our own galaxy uh, basically will uh, expire in these spiral arms. We can also look at the distribution of gas and dust in uh, the Milky Way galaxy by detecting the radio waves that which, they, which they emit. Okay, and when that is done, it's a complicated business, analyzing it, so on and so forth. They find that uh, uh, the gas and dust is also concentrated in these um, uh, spiral arms. Okay, so what is uh, uh, here is the all sky view, 21 centimeter radio waves produced by cool clouds of neutral hydrogen. Okay, what is involved is it turns out that, as we mentioned before, in talking about uh, the generacy of the electrons, electrons uh, have a magnetic moment associated with uh, their intrinsic angular momentum spin, which can either point up or down. The nucleus of hydrogen atom, which is proton, also has magnetic moment associated with the spin. So an electron in a hydrogen atom, uh, its magnetic moment can be parallel to that of the nucleus, or it can be anti-parallel. And it turns out that depending on orientation of the magnetic moment of the electron, whether it's parallel to the magnetic moment of the proton or opposite, the resulting energies are slightly different. The energy is slightly higher when uh, the electron's magnetic moment is parallel to that of the proton and lower uh, when we have the opposite situation. So when an electron makes a transition, from that slightly higher energy level to the lower, uh, the extra energy is emitted uh, at this particular wavelength of uh, 21 centimeters, which belongs to the um, uh, radio wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, so we have <clears throat> pretty good idea that indeed our galaxy is the spiral galaxy. There is also a difference between the disk stars and those in the halo and the bulge uh, <clears throat> in their content of elements heavier than helium. By their content of elements uh, heavier than helium. And they are, in this context, uh, all uh, referred to as metals. Not all of them uh, are metals like uh, you know, copper, silver, uh, gold, but uh, astronomers collectively uh, label all the elements heavier than helium as metals. Disk stars are so-called population one stars, and they have a higher content of metals, anywhere from two to three percent. And then uh, the halo and bulge stars are uh, consists of mostly population two stars, about 0.1%, an order of magnitude smaller than population one stars. Okay, so you can <coughs> see already the trends in the Milky Way. <coughs> the disk stars, uh, they are sort of regular stars like mm, our sun that live maybe 10 billion years, but there are also those uh, very hot and luminous and short-lived stars. There's lots of gas and dust. Halo and bulge uh, contain, uh, halo in particular, no uh, gas and dust. The stars tend to be older, lower main sequence stars, and the stars in the bulge are similar. Also, those in the disk, they have higher percentage of elements heavier than uh, uh, helium so-called metals, uh, and those in the halo and the bulge have an order of magnitude smaller concentration of metals. So all these, these trends, all of that should give us some idea as to how uh, the galaxy was formed.